Despite the pressure from many countries to hold each other to better human rights standards, as well as instant global media and international pressure from common folk, groups of people still find reasons to persecute other groups of people for being the wrong kind of different. Unfortunately, a big part of the problem is that many of the countries doing the most discriminatory practices are some of the richest or most developed countries in the world, and they have an outsized influence on the politics of their region and even the world at large. In today's video, we're going over the worst countries to be persecuted persecuted for reasons that you can't control. Number 9. Uganda Back in 2014, Uganda was considering a draconian bill to punish gay people for being gay, and a United States pastor named Scott Livey, who has tried to run for governor of Massachusetts, among other things, was alleged to have inspired the creation of the bill years previously, and had wanted to make it a bill that punished homosexuality with death. In the end, the bill signed in 2014 was watered down due to international pressure. The law was struck down due to a technicality by the High Court of Uganda, not for any particular human rights reason, so the whole thing is still kind of in limbo. The current leadership of Uganda seems to have held off on reintroducing the bill and want to ensure that they don't have any technical problems the next time they try to pass it. However, the bill is still quite popular among many lawmakers in the country who have threatened to reintroduce it, and homophobic incidents have risen since the introduction of the bill, which has made Uganda a very hostile place for gay people to live. Number 8. Brunei Brunei is a small, oil-rich, mostly Muslim country in Southeast Asia. It is home to about 430,000 people at the last census, so it isn't particularly large, but in recent years it has still managed to become newsworthy because of the draconian new laws put in place by their supreme leader, Sultan Hassan al balkir back in 2014. Essentially, he changed the country's penal code to reflect Sharia law as closely as possible. Now, considering Brunei is a largely Muslim country, most people didn't make that much of an outcry. However, very recently in 2019, the Sultan added some new amendments to his penal code to make the rules even harsher. Gay sex was already punishable by up to 10 years in prison, but now you can be whipped for it or even killed by stoning. The Sultan also decreed that adultery was now punishable through death by stoning as well. To make matters worse, the rules are supposed to also apply to foreigners, even if they're not Muslim, which has the international community in an uproar. George Clooney, Elton John, and several other high-profile celebrities are running a boycott of nine hotels throughout the world that are connected to the Sultan of Brunei in the hopes that they can hit him in his pocketbook. The idea is that if this gets enough traction, he'll reconsider the Sharia law system in his country. So far, though, the Sultan does not seem interested in caving to international pressure, though there is a moratorium on the harshest penalties, at least for now. Instead, he seems to hope that other countries will respect that Brunei just has its own way of doing things as a sovereign nation and leave him alone. Number 7. Saudi Arabia Many people heard last year that Saudi Arabia finally relaxed the ban on allowing women to drive motor vehicles. It was heralded as a huge step forward, and people talked about Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman as being a reformer and to some extent, he is still seen as one even after the debacle involving his alleged involvement in the death of Jamal Khashoggi. Now, he was the one who relaxed the ban on women driving, but he also arrested many female activists who had agitated for the rule change and for women's rights in general. This flexing of his dictatorial muscle may have only been to assert his authority, but it created a chilling effect on women's rights activism in Saudi Arabia. If women are afraid that even when the crown prince ultimately agrees with them, they will still be jailed for protesting, it makes it harder for future women to protest about issues in the country. And the truth is, according to a poll taken of 550 women's issue experts by Reuters Thompson last year after the relaxation of the female driving ban, Saudi Arabia still has a very long way to go. There are over 195 sovereign countries in the world, and despite being one of the richest, they are the fifth most dangerous for women, beat only by India, Afghanistan, Syria, and Somalia. The main reason for this is the guardianship law, which the crown prince seems uninterested in changing, and which women will now be even more afraid to agitate against after so many arrests. This guardianship law states that women cannot leave the country or even work without the permission of a male relative. This makes it all but impossible for a woman to leave an abusive relationship, make it on her own, or be independent. She will always be under the control of one of the men in her life. Number 6. 
Iran. In Iran, sodomy is still a crime, and the law states that sodomy can even be punished by death, although this is rarely ever the case unless the sodomy was done against other people's will. However, gay people can and do find themselves hit with harsh prison sentences and other punishments if found to be living any kind of gay lifestyle, and will usually be socially ostracized as well. Many in the medical profession have found a unique and cruel solution, and that's to give people sex change operations to fix them. Now, if you're transgender, a sex exchange operation that is fully accepted by the government and covered by your insurance might sound great, but these aren't transgender people. They're just your garden variety homosexuals. The medical profession and people's friends and families often pressure them to get sex changes in order to make them right. The problem is that people still treat transgender people even worse than they do in the United States, and so it really doesn't fix anything, even for the few that were actually transgender and not just gay. All it really does is permanent mutilate people who don't need an operation and create even more social confusion and strife. Now, to be clear, the government doesn't mandate that you do this, but because being gay is not okay in Iran, but being a man trapped in a woman's body is, the social pressure to get a sex change can be incredibly hard to fight. Number 5. The USA The United States is supposed to be one of the more progressive countries in the world, at least as far as many Americans are concerned. After all, America prides itself on protecting personal freedoms. The fact of the matter is that while minority rights may not always be properly respected, the laws on the books at least do state that you cannot discriminate against people for their race. However, when it comes to being gay, it's a different story. Only 22 states, along with Washington, D.C., protect you from being fired for being gay. Another 11 give you that protection, but only if you're a public employee. While this doesn't necessarily mean someone will use it against you, it leaves you living in fear for your job if you're homosexual in many states, and leaves gay people feeling like second-class citizens in their own country, even after the recent small wins on gay marriage. There are also many states where it is still extremely difficult to adopt children if you're gay. While the Supreme Court has ruled that gay people have the right to adopt, many adoption agencies are run by religious organizations which sometimes try to claim a religious exemption and are stalling in the courts. Part of the reason this is such a big battle is that in some states or regions, the religious-run agency is pretty much the only game around. But of course, this isn't the only way the USA persecutes some of its own. Many people like to think that racism has been fixed and segregation has been removed and it was all over after the Civil Rights Act. Unfortunately, oh, that's just not true. The problem was that much of the damage had already been done. Black people had been discriminated against when it came to rentals and buying houses for years in order to create all-white neighborhoods and black people were frequently shunted to the ghettos, even in parts of the country where segregation wasn't practiced as an official policy. By the time segregation really came to an end and the Civil Rights Act made it harder for discrimination by property owners, people were already pretty divided up. To make it worse, the way policy in the US works means it's unlikely that this will change much over time. The vast majority of school funding is based on local tax revenue, mainly from property taxes and not from the state, so this ensures that poor communities stay poor. This also means that those who live in the area are rarely going to be able to make it out of that community, and richer people with money are not likely to ever come in. Number 4. Chechnya Chechnya is a republic in the southwestern part of the Russian Federation and is mostly Muslim and a rather conservative nation. Back in 2017, according to many sources, including a report by the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, Chechnya was rounding up a massive amount of suspected gay men, torturing them, threatening them, and sometimes even encouraging their families to kill them as a matter of honor. This is because some extreme Islamic sects engage in honor killings to cleanse the family of shame if someone breaks a bad enough rule. The Chechen authorities could then look the other way and pretend that the actual killings had nothing to do with the government. Of course, the Chechen government has denied pretty much all of of it from the very beginning and has taken the stance that different sexual orientations simply don't exist at all in Chechnyan culture. In 2019, the Russian LGBT network alleged that Chechnya is back at it again with another serious purge, and that since the first purge started, they have helped roughly 150 people get to safety who were at risk from the Chechen government. They also allege that since the government started their most recent purge in 2019, there have been at least 40 detained and two killed by Chechen authorities. Number 3. Myanmar 
Myanmar. Most people consider Buddhists to be an entirely peaceful people, mainly due to the Western conceptions of their religion. However, being Buddhist doesn't necessarily mean peaceful behavior, and this has been no more apparent than in Myanmar, formerly Burma. Following a 2012 election, a Buddhist woman was raped and killed by a Rohingya Muslim a minority group in the largely Buddhist nation. Now, obviously, one man's behavior should not reflect on an entire people, but perhaps many of the citizens and the governments, they were just looking for an excuse. Roughly 140,000 Rohingya Muslims were put in open-air concentration camps and the international community started investigating, alleging, after looking over conditions and talking to people, that a potential genocide was being attempted. Since then, investigators and reporters from around the world have alleged that their discoveries have shown shocking conditions and what looks like a possible coordinated attempt at genocide by the government of Myanmar. The government denies not only being involved, but also the violence itself. However, the evidence of something going on is really hard to ignore, even if it doesn't end up technically qualifying as genocide, whether intentional or otherwise. Since the alleged genocide has begun, well over 700,000 Rohingya have fled from the country, mostly to neighboring Bangladesh, bringing back stories of rape, murder, arson, and Buddhist citizens being encouraged by the government and even assisted by them in destroying Rohingya and taking everything they once had for themselves. Now again, the government of Myanmar has steadfastly denied all of this, but there is good reason to believe the stories have some truth to them. Some of those who have fled and faced repatriation have killed themselves before such a possibility could occur. They would rather die than face persecution in their home country. Number two, Qatar. Qatar is an extremely oil-rich country in the Gulf region and has recently been in the news due to their row with Saudi Arabia. However, after that whole thing sort of just fizzled out, everyone but Amnesty International and a few other activist organizations more or less just stopped paying attention. The problem is that Qatar is a nation of almost entirely migrant workers who are not really considered as having full status or full rights in the country as it would overwhelm their native population. In fact, the problem has become so severe that in advance of building up for the 2022 World Cup that Qatar is hosting, they currently have almost 2 million migrant workers, which is close to 90% of their entire population. This unsurprisingly has led to a lot of abuses. One of the worst laws which the government has slowly been rolling back due to international pressure, made it illegal for a migrant worker to exit the country without the permission of their employer, and they also relied on their employer for visas and sponsorship. This was decried by many in the international community as basically modern-day slavery, not just in name, but pretty much written down and defined in the law. Now, the changes still allow employers to keep 5% of their employees for now from exiting, and with the employees' signed permission, they can still take their passport. According to Amnesty International, National and others, Qatar still has a lot to do if they want to reach any kind of decent human rights conditions for their migrant workers before the World Cup rolls around. Number 1. United Arab Emirates Dubai, being one of the seven emirates of the United Arab Emirates, is not exactly known around the world for being female-friendly. In fact, most people assume that the UAE in general has rules pretty similar to Saudi Arabia. What many people may not know, however, is just how ridiculous the laws in Dubai actually are and just how bad it really is for women there. In 2016, a British woman visiting Dubai reported to the police that she had been gang raped by several British nationals. While most people would expect the police in any country to be sympathetic to such a charge and immediately start looking for the perpetrators, she was immediately jailed upon suspicion of extramarital sex. The problem is that the law in Dubai states that any sex you have outside of marriage is illegal. Now, it isn't necessarily that they punish non-consensual sex, but in the United States and much of the Western world, we operate on a general principle of innocent until proven guilty. The problem is that in Dubai, when they find out you've had extramarital sex, they immediately consider you as under investigation until the courts decide if it was truly rape or not, as you reported it to be. This, of course, can be incredibly traumatic for any woman who has been raped, so it's not exactly a great country for women to live in, work in, or even visit. As for the woman in question who was arrested, she was eventually fully released due to international pressure, but at first they only released her on bail after confiscating her passport. So I really hope you found that video interesting if you did please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe brand new videos just like this every day of the week for more from me why not check out another video i do if you enjoy today's sort of geography themed content i think you'll enjoy another channel i do called geographics i'm gonna link to that below and as always thank you for watching